As a lawyer, I have many clients in the movie industry. This gentleman is one of them. Arthur Daniels, the producer. We're the same age, but Arthur is prematurely gray. And uh, the reason is obvious. And another thing, Mr. Daniels, if you had any influence on this lot, you wouldn't permit my child to work under such conditions. And if you don't replace her moth-eaten wardrobe, hire her sister as a stand-in, and get her a private dressing room, Mary Louise is walking out. Come along, darling. Stage mothers. In my last picture, Bentley, I used a lion. He escaped from his cage during rehearsal and still didn't cause half the chaos that she does. What a business. Yes, what a business. Forgive the interruption. As I was saying, that tax structure you set up for me is brilliant. Positively brilliant. I don't know what I'd do without you. When you get my bill, you'll try. And, well, you're going to save me a lot of money. And anything I can do to repay the favor, name it. Really? Anything? Anything at all. Well, Arthur, you, um, you could introduce me to the girl connected to those legs. <laughs> If I ever pick up that phone to make another date with an actress, let the air out of my tires, will you? I, I see Edie Madrid on television. She's a very glamorous girl. To look at, not to listen to. <laughs> yuck, 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 yuck. Actresses. I think I hear eggs boiling in kitchen. <laughs> Miss Kelly, Miss Kelly. Peter, I'm coming right down. It's not time to tell Uncle you enroll in dramatic school. Miss Kelly, Miss Kelly. Morning. Morning, darling. Uncle Bentley. Remember that ten dollars you gave me for Christmas? Uh -huh. And you told me to spend it wisely? Mm -hmm. Well, yesterday I used it to... <laughs> yes, dear, what'd you spend it for? Mm, nothing. Um, excuse me for a minute. Not now. Not now what? Not now time to talk about dramatic school. He got mad on for actresses. Darling, gonna be late for school. Yeah, I'll crack your egg for you. <laughs> Peter, chickens now laying messages? Well, I... Peter didn't think now was the time for me to tell you. Tell me what, dear? I enrolled in a dramatic school. I've decided to be an actress. You what? It'll help my poise, my culture, my speech, my... No. But I already enrolled. Unroll. Well, I want to be an actress more than anything else in my whole life. Darling, be a nurse, be a scientist, be a riveter, but not an actress. But, Uncle Bentley, I already gave them my ten dollars. Sure, you fell for one of those phony ads. Become an actress in ten easy lessons, ten dollars down, and one impossible payment. <laughs> Darling, they're all rackets. Learn to draw, become a ventriloquist. You two can play the piano. I always want to play piano. Where find school like that? <laughs> we'll discuss your career later. But Uncle Ben, I not another great. word, dear. I think that Ms. goes Kelly. for you too. Gee whiz, Uncle great. Ben, not I another think... word. <laughs> not another word, Kelly. You are not going to dramatic school. Hold on, a yes, Kitty. Miss Plunkett. I don't know a Miss Plunkett. All right, all right, send her in. Uh, and Kitty. When the garage comes to pick up my car, will you tell them that, that uh, there are a couple of wires that are crossed? Short circuit. I got a shock when I touched the ignition this morning. All right, thank you. Kelly, dear, now you've got to stop interrupting me at the office. Not another word, dear. Goodbye. My niece got mixed up with some crooked dramatic school. Now, Miss Bucket, what can I do for you? I run that crooked dramatic school. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, sorry I sounded so blunt. Uh, won't you sit down? You don't look like you run a crooked dramatic school. <laughs> Mr. Gregg, I dropped in because Kelly called to tell me you're insisting she withdraw from my class. Yes. Yes, that's true. You see, I'm trying to raise a nice, average teenage girl who'll grow up to be a 
nice average wife and mother. It's my opinion that Kelly has talent and should be encouraged. Come now, Miss Plunkett. We're both in the business world. We both have to make a living. I, uh, I quite understand. No, Mr. Gregg, you don't. Before I accept pupils, they must undergo a rigid aptitude test. And your niece shows great potential. <laughs> Forgive me for doubting your integrity, but if there's one thing I am certain of, it's that Kelly is not an actress. Have you ever listened to her? Have you ever heard what she can do? Well, no, I, uh... Oh, I thought not. I've known men like you. Unfair, narrow-minded, dogmatic, and opinionated. It's quite obvious. You're more interested in getting your ten dollars back than in your niece's career. Dogmatic and opinionated, huh? All I want is my ten dollars back, huh? That's how much you know about it, Miss Plunkett. Kelly, dear, what's Miss Plunkett been teaching you? Improvisations. What's improvisations? Well, they're little stories that you act out with no words. Like man sneaking past desk clerk without paying bill. <laughs> Darling, why don't you show us one of your improvisations? You really want to see me act? Why, sure. It sounds like an awful lot of fun. All right. Come on now, come on. <laughs> Did you get it? Sure. You sneaking past hotel desk clerk without paying bills. No, Peter. You got her, didn't you, Uncle Bentley? Well, I think it was little Eva crossing the ice carrying her lunch. No. I was picking cotton on a hot day and dying of thirst. Well, darling, when an actor acts, you have to believe in what he's doing. Now, I didn't believe you. Well, why don't you try another one? All right. <laughs> That's it. And don't say it's a man sneaking past a hotel desk clerk. That woman sneaking past desk clerk. I didn't get it, darling. What was it? I was a mother duck. I spotted a hawk, and I gathered up my ducklings under my wings. I didn't believe you as a duck, either. Maybe I'm not very good on pantomime. Now, suppose you try one of these improvisations with words. Tell you what, let's use this over here as a stage. And uh, we'll be out here in the audience, and you come in from out here. Now, come in with something, but this time, make me believe it, okay? Okay. This time we've got to be more hip audience. Listen, I'm going to be honest with her. There's no point in encouraging her if she's not any good. All right, darling, anytime you're ready. Uncle Bentley, your car is on fire. <laughs> Uncle Bentley, do you hear me? Your car is on fire. Yeah, that's not quite it. <laughs> Uncle Bentley, believe me, your car is on fire. <laughs> I believe her. I almost smell smoke. Uncle Bentley, I beg of you, go outside and look. Your car is I on know. fire. You don't make me feel it. I just don't believe it. Hey, somebody's car is on fire. He said, I believe him. <laughs> My car on fire. Where did you tell me? Got Kelly there. Peter, I ask you, have I done anything so terrible? Now, why is she sulking? All I'm trying to do is to protect her. My interpretation of her behavior pattern is you don't want her to be actress, and you subconsciously fight her talent. A little cream, Dr. Freud. <laughs> Last night, when car on fire, I believe her. You did, huh? Then so why didn't you go outside and put it out? Performance like her, you only see once in a lifetime. Car on fire, you see any day. Good morning. Morning, darling. 
I'll just have the juice this morning. Thank you, Peter. Kelly, dear, I'd like you to understand my feelings about you being an actress. I understand. Do you think being an actress is, is all fun and glamour? It's not. It's a relentless, exacting grind. Work, study, rehearse, worry, and then more work, more study, more rehearsal. It never ends. Don't you understand, dear? It sounds just wonderful to me. Sounds fascinating to me, too. <laughs> All right. All right. I refuse to live in an armed camp. That's what you want. That's what you're going to get. Study. You meet me down at the office after school, and I'll take you down and introduce you to Arthur Daniels. Arthur Daniels, the movie producer? Mm hmm Oh, Uncle Bisley! Hello, Arthur. Bentley Gray. Well, how are you, Bentley? Arthur, do you remember when you said the other day if I wanted a favor just to ask you? Yeah, anything, Bentley, anything. Know that dog story that you start next week? Uh, yes. Uh, how about giving my niece Kelly a small part in it, huh? No. <laughs> no. This means a great deal to me, really. Look, Bentley, we're on a tight two-week shooting schedule. Good. Make up 5 a.m. on the set at 7. Fine. That's plus her schoolwork. Great. <laughs> all right, Bentley, all right. I'll do it for you. I have a part for a little girl that starts Monday, but tell her it's no picnic. <laughs> I'm hoping she's going to find that out for herself. Arthur, you're a pal. Thanks a million. Bye. <laughs>